Hey everyone, I'm Julia from Krakowlock and welcome back to our channel. Today's tutorial will be fully about data stores from Jet Engine plugin. I'll show you how to set up data stores and using the data stores module, we will create pages for users to add items to. Before we begin, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell to receive notifications. So what is actually a data store? Basically, it's a repository for persistently storing collections of data, such as a database, a file system, or a directory. In other words, it's a repository for saving favorite posts or items. The pages like favorites or wishlist can sufficiently improve the user experience on your website. So that's why data stores is so much needed, as this module gives you all the necessary tools to create a convenient and good-looking wishlist and even show users how many times every item was liked by the others. And in this video, I'm going to be using our vacation rental website template for Elementor, Belly Rento. To check its features, simply follow the link in the description box below. So let's start our tutorial with creating a data store. Go to the dashboard and open Jet Engine Modules. Enable the data stores module and save it. After enabling the module, you will see the new tab in the Jet Engine dashboard – Data Stores. Proceed to it and click the New Store button. Let's take a closer look at the features of a store. Name – Type in the title of your data store here. Slug – This is the inner name of the store that can be used by other modules. Do not use spaces or other specialized characters there. Only letters dash and underscore symbols. Store type. Here you can choose where the data saved by the user will be stored. So we have four options. Cookies. The data is stored as cookies and will disappear after clearing the cache data. Session. The data will be stored only until the user ends the session on the server. User metadata. The information will be stored in the user's metadata. This option is available only to authorized users because they actually have the option to save metadata on your website. And the last one, local storage. The data will be stored in the user's local browser. Maximum size. This option allows you to define how many items the user could store. If the user saves too many items, it could affect the loading speed. On the other hand, if the number is too small, it could annoy the user. Count items. If you enable this function, the data store will count how many times each of the items were added to the store. Is user store means that this store will contain user IDs, allowed only for server side stores. Store item on view, in other words, recently viewed posts or product. We will get back to it later in this tutorial. When you are done with creating a store, hit the Save button. Now, I suggest you create a new page where the users will have access to the saved post. Let's go to Pages, create a new one, and name it, for example, My Favorites. I'm doing this step now as a link to this page will be needed shortly. Publish the page. Don't worry that we're not styling it now. We'll get back to it very soon. To show items saved by a user to the store, we will use a listing grid widget. But before you create a new page and put the listing grid in there, you will need a listing itself. It is better to create a new listing specially for your favorites page. And if you need more details on how to do that from scratch, check our listing creation tutorial. So I'm gonna open a listing item that I previously created. What I want to add here is a certain button that will allow the users to add an item to their favorites or wishlist. Let's search for a dynamic link widget and drag it. In the content tab, you'll see Source. It is set to permalink by default, but you need to select Add to Store and a bit below, select the store you want the items to be added to. I'm gonna select the favorite store. I'll open pop up on Success. Toggle this on if you want a pop-up to be opened after a post successfully added to the store. Pop-ups should be selected in Advanced tab, Jet Pop-up section. Reload Listing Grid on Success. 
Turn this on if you want a certain message to be displayed after you add an item and customize it in Add it to store text field. Add it to store URL, the link to the page where all the favorite posts will be collected. I'm gonna insert the link to my favorites page. Select an icon from the library or upload your own SVG file. Let it be a heart icon. Repeat the same step with the field icon. Delete the label and set the alignment to center. OK, proceed to the style tab. Let's set a white background color and gray one for the text for normal state and red color for in-store state. Adjust the padding and to make it round, set border radius to 50. Icon size will be 20. You can place the dynamic link widget anywhere you want, but I want it to be in the top right corner. For that, I will proceed to the Advanced tab, then open Positioning, select Inline for the width, Position Absolute, and Horizontal Orientation right. Horizontal Offset 20 pixels, Vertical Offset minus 434 pixels. Ok, we're done here. On the front end, it's gonna look like this. So, the post is successfully added. To let the users delete the posts or items from the favorites, we need to create another listing. A listing source Posts, Post Type, Properties, I will name it Favorites Remove and Listing View Elementor. This is a pre-made listing that I styled differently, however, it will be absolutely fine if you use the same listing that you created before. The only thing that lags here is a remove button. Let's search for a dynamic link widget again and drag it, let's say, right here. Now in the source, select Remove from store and select the store Favorites. Be sure to check Remove post from current listing. Let's rename the label to Remove and set a field icon. Alignment will be left. In the style tab, set red colors for normal, hover, and in store states. Style the text in the typography and add icon gap. Publish the listing. Finally, the only thing that is left to style my favorites page. Let's go to pages and edit my favorites page in Elementor. In the bottom left corner, you'll see page settings. Set page layout to Elementor full width. Now add a section, content width boxed. Apply listing grid widget. Under the general, I will select the last listing, favorites remove. Choose the number of columns and set post number. Let it be, for example, 10. Customize the not found message. In the post query section, hit the add item button. This option will exclude the posts that are not in the favorites store. In the type, select posts and author parameters. And at the bottom of this box, you will find Get Post from Store. Select your favorite store. Adjust the position in the Advanced tab. By the way, if you want to show the users how many items they saved, Jet Engine has a perfect instrument for it – Dynamic Tags. A dynamic tag is a special source of content. Instead of typing the text in or uploading media right to the widget, you can pull it dynamically from another source with the help of dynamic tag. So let's add a heading. Under the title, you will find this dynamic tags button. Click on it and scroll down a bit. You'll see these three options. Data stores, post count. Shows how many times the post has been added to different users' stores. 
Store count shows the overall quantity of posts added by the current user. The last option, Get Store, displays the IDs of the posts. So let's select the store count for now and in the settings, choose Favorite Store. In the advanced, you can add a before and after text as well. Don't forget to style the heading. Now, this step is optional, however, you can also set a bit darker color for the page background and a white color for the column background. Click Publish. Let's check if everything works properly. I'm gonna add a couple of properties to Favorites, then open my Favorites page and remove everything. Great! Another useful thing, creating a recently viewed section using data stores module. For this one, we need to create a new data store. Again, go to Jet Engine, Jet Engine Dashboard, Data Stores, and hit the New Store button. Choose the name, store type, and other features. Turn on the Store Item and View toggle. This will allow adding the post to the store after the user visits them. You can also specify the post type that will be added in the Watch for Post Type drop-down menu. In my case, it will be Properties. When you are done, hit the Save button. As always, the items from the store will be displayed with the help of Listing Grid widget so you need to create a new listing first or use the one that you already have. Open the page where you want the recently viewed section to be displayed, for example, home page. I'm gonna copy this listing grid and paste it a bit below. The only thing I will add here is post query repeating the steps that we did before with the favorites. But this time in the Get Post from Store, I will select Recently Viewed Store. The grid is empty right now, but don't worry, the items will show up once I open some properties. And I think it would be nice to make a slider, so I'm gonna unfold slider and enable it. Don't forget to add a heading and update the page. Let's see the final result. Don't think that we're done with dynamic link and dynamic tags. Here are two more options on how you can use them, let's say, on a single page template. Depending on what kind of website you have, you can open a post, for example. In my case, it's a template that I created for the properties listed on my website. So we've already used dynamic tags on the favorites page, and now I'd like to achieve a different result here. Instead of showing how many items the current user saved, we can display how many users added this item to their favorites or wishlist. I'm gonna add a heading, let's say right here near the rating, and click on Dynamic Tags button. As you remember, previously we selected Store Count, and now it's gonna be Post Count. Select your favorite store, and set a before or after text. Style the heading and adjust its position. In case if you want to make add to a wishlist button, not just a simple icon, here is how we can do that. Apply the dynamic link widget. Set source to add to store and select favorites store. 
Now set edit to store text that will appear after the user hits this button and insert the link to your favorites page. Select both store and field icons and set label to, for example, add to favorite. I'm going to change the alignment to full width as well. Now in the style tab, customize the font, set colors, and adjust the padding. Select water type solid and adjust its width. Don't forget to set border color, change the icon size and gap and adjust the padding in the Advanced tab. You can also scroll down a bit and set white color for the background and add more buttons if needed. Great! Let me open the property to check if everything works correctly. So, as you can see now, it says 49 users added it to the favorites and if I hit the Add to Favorite button, it's gonna change to 50. And if you click on the button again, it's gonna redirect you to the Favorites page where you can easily delete the items you no longer need. And lastly, I'd like to introduce you our free dev tool created specifically for the Data Stores module. This plugin allows to delete the posts automatically from the user stores once the post is removed from the site. Here is how we can help you. I deactivated the plugin for now, so at the end you could see the difference this plugin makes. I'm gonna add a couple of items and open my favorites page. The counter shows three items. Now I'm gonna open a dashboard in a new tab and delete one of the items that I previously added to the favorites. Okay, let's get back to the favorites page and refresh it. So it does not show the deleted property, however the counter still shows three items which means that the property is still somewhere in the storage. However, the key point here is to be sure that once you delete a post, it won't show up on any favorites or wishlist page and won't confuse the user. This is exactly why clear post on delete plugin is needed. Let me activate it and as this plugin works with the user meta stores only, I need to change the type of my favorites store. So instead of cookies or a session, you have to select user metadata, otherwise the plugin will simply not work. At first I'm gonna add three properties to the favorites. Then delete one of them. and refresh the favorites page. As you can see, the counter works perfectly. It shows two items as one of them has been already deleted from the storage. So guys, in this tutorial, we've covered everything on data stores module. I hope you enjoyed it and it was useful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. In case if any technical assistance is needed, we have a whole support team that is eager to help you anytime. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.